recording? Yes. All right. Um, I'd like to convene this meeting of the Board of Directors of San Lorenzo Valley Water District uh, for June 2nd, 2022. Can you take a roll call, please, Holly? Uh -oh. She keeps saying, uh-oh. Sorry, I'm here now. Okay, so President Mayhood. Here. Okay, um, Vice President Ackerman. Here. Bob Falls. Here. Jeff Hill. Here. And Mark Smalley. Here. Okay, are there any additions or deletions to the closed session agenda? The staff has none, Chair. Okay, this is the time for oral communications regarding items uh, in the closed session. If there are members of the public that would like to address that. At the moment, I don't see any attendees. Uh, are there any, is there anybody phoning in or anything? Holly, that doesn't look like it. Um, okay, then with that, we can adjourn to closed session. Holly, would you like to take the roll call, please? President Mayhood. Here. Vice President Ackman. Here. Director Falls. Here. Director Hill. Here. Director Smalley. Here. <coughs> Um, this is the point where we would report any actions taken in closed session. Um, there is nothing to report out from closed session. No actions were taken. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Uh, staff has none. Okay. Then this brings us to the portion of the meeting where we have oral communications from the public um, on items under the purview of the district, but that are not on the agenda tonight. Um, would anybody uh, like to uh, among the attendees, I see three out there. Would anybody like to address the board right now? Please raise your hand if you would. Okay, uh, seeing none, um, then the next item of business is the president's report. I have nothing to report this evening, so we can move on to new business, um, which is the 2021-22 grand jury report. And Gina, were you going to go ahead and lead the discussion here? Uh, thank you, Chair Mayhood. Yes, I'll, I'll tee up the discussion on the grand jury report. Um, you have in your board packet, um, and I believe uh, a copy was also emailed to you um, at about the time that the grand jury released this report that they've been working on for the past year regarding water um, and drought resilience in Santa Cruz County. Um, the grand jury did request responses from a number of agencies, uh, boards, uh, and, and individual officials um, as listed in uh, toward the end of the grand jury report. The requested respondees include the district's board of director, directors, as well as um, Rick individually as the district manager. Um, all such responses by public agencies and officials, and frankly, everybody from whom the grand jury is requesting responses, those are due by August 22nd. So the purpose of this meeting is for the board to have an opportunity to discuss the grand jury report, and in particular, to identify a process for developing um, the response from the board of directors so that it can be approved uh, at a public meeting by the board in advance of the August 22nd deadline. Um, there are a number of ways that that could be done. Um, one way would be to appoint an ad hoc committee consisting of a, of a couple of board members um, to write the response to bring back to the board for review and approval. Another would be to um, appoint staff to prepare a response for uh, the board to consider at some subsequent meetings. Um, either way, I, I would recommend that 
that the that the board proceed with a view towards having a draft come back no later than about the second meeting in July, so that there's you know potential there's at least one and potentially two opportunities for the board to consider and um, revise the draft responses as needed, um, so that it can be approved in advance of the deadline. Um, and I, I guess the last comment that I want to make is to suggest that um, there's no requirement of the grand jury that responses be be detailed. Um, you won't, there's only a need to provide any kind of a narrative response if the board doesn't agree with the grand jury finding a recommendation. And so one way to respond to the report could be a sort of a minimalist type response with um, uh, which is actually very common if you go to the grand jury's website and see some of the example responses to other reports in the past. But that, you know, it, it's up to the board how you want to respond and what process you want to put in place to develop the responses for approval. Okay, uh, so I guess what I'd like to do is um, go around and get a general comment from everybody um, on the board of how they um, how they think we should address the report um, or their opinion about the report, then I'll go out to the public, get any comments that they might have, and then we'll come back and try to settle on a process that we think is appropriate. Um, so let me go ahead and start with Mark, if you don't mind, if you'd like to comment on, on this and we'll get, we'll get everybody a chance to say something. Sure. Um, before I can comment on how we should respond, I want to make sure of what we should be responding to. Um, on page 23, the chart um, calls out for the district to respond to um, what resolutions one and, and two. However, uh, from reading uh, the predecessors to those, it appears as though we should only be responding to resolution two, since the narrative for R1 doesn't list uh, the district. Uh, well, I think I, I think I can clarify that in the sense that okay. one of the documents that we, we actually got is directed to me as the board president and it, it is a document that actually lists all the things that we have to respond to. And that document lists all of the findings um, that are that they consider relevant and okay. R1 and R2. So irrespective of the narrative that you saw, those are the ones we're expected to respond to. So I, I think Gina did, was that, I think that was attached in the, the documents. You might go back, Mark, and look at your, your email, but I think that Gina attached that. It's basically what's sent to me, and it's what the board has to respond to, which may be slightly different than what Scotts Valley. I think Scotts Valley board president was asked essentially the same thing. And you look, you're looking puzzled. Um, well, I, I think we did get what you're referring to yeah. as part of the agenda packet. That's where I was seeing these details. Um, but if I'm the only one that's seeing it that way, I, I will take it as I read this incorrectly and we'll leave it at that. Yeah. I, I'm, um, I'm just looking at it now and R1 is in there. <laughs> R1 is in there, but it doesn't mention our district. That doesn't matter. Um, that, okay. Uh, okay. Basically, they're asking, well, let, let me just say what I'm speculating what they're asking is because SLV is one of the JPA, the three founding members of Santa Margarita, the question that we're being posed is, should we, as those founding members, agree to a change of the charter of Santa Margarita? Okay, and that, hmm. that's why we're being asked that. Obviously, the same question is being asked of Santa Margarita itself. But you know, it, frankly, in some ways, it, the, the important thing is what the three the JPA members believe about this. Oh, okay, all right. Because, um, for example, we might have a different answer than, say, Scotts Valley would or the county would, and I think that's why they're asking for a 
a, a response okay. to each individual one that might even be different from what Santa Margarita does because that board has, as you know, representatives of Mount Hermon, um, private well right. owners. So it's a, it's a different cast of characters. Right, okay. Okay, um, th that clarifies now for me what we're responding to. Um, are the responses uh, that we need to make anything more than if we agree with those questions at the end to say, yes, it's simply check the box and we're done. That that, that's correct. If we agree, okay. uh, well, you could elaborate if you want, but if you agree, right. you can just check that box and say nothing right. else. And it's only if you uh, partially, what is it, partially disagree. Right, or disagree, or disagree that, that we need to respond. Yeah, required. yes. I, I think it's appropriate for the board to form a, a subcommittee of two people and uh, have those individuals. I don't know if staff is necessary to, to join two board members to come up with a response for this from the board. Okay. Um, Bob? Or Jamie, you had your hand up, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, Bob, I'll get back to you. <laughs> So um, uh, the first of all, I, I agree in approach that we should um, have the board uh, form a subcommittee to respond. Um, and I, I guess I, I start starting with the recommendations that they ask us to respond to, um, uh, you know, certainly where we don't have comments and we agree, which there are several uh, findings and, and recommendations that we may agree on. But um, you know, some of them, like the, the timeline for the second recommendation of December 31st, 2022, is in my view, you know, a little unreasonable given everything else that we're grappling with as a district. And in, in my view, that is the thing that most alarmingly stands out of the civil grand jury report, is a reflection of the fact that uniquely we are the only water district that is, you know, in this recovery process. And yet none of that was reflected in any of their investigation. Um, in terms of reasons that we may not um, be able to move forward or may not have moved forward as efficiently on some of the findings that they made. Um, uh, you know, and so I, I just think that there, there is a little bit of uh, clarity that some of our responses might bring to um, some of the places where I think they failed to take into consideration San Lorenzo Valley Water District's unique conditions. Bob? Uh, do we have any sense of who they talk to at the um, San Lorenzo Valley Water District um, to gather their facts? Did they talk to anybody? Well, I can tell you they I, did not contact me. <laughs> they, they yeah, I, I have to check, Bob, what we can disclose about that. Um, I, I can say this, there was very limited contact with the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. I mean, in, in previous um, grand jury uh, reports that have impacted or had dealt with issues uh, affecting the San Lorenzo Valley Water District, there were enormous number of people contacted in both of those. Um, uh, folks on the board may not have, have been involved in those at that time, but I, I can tell you for a fact that there were a lot of people involved in that. Um, in addition to, I think, some of the concerns that, that Jamie was talking about, I have um, other concerns around some of the viewpoints that, that seem to be almost a sales document around certain structures that are sort of maybe, you know, the end goal of folks. I, you know, our community spoke pretty loud and clear, um, geez, what is a little over a year ago now, about their view on San Lorenzo Valley Water District, the ownership uh, and, and control over the resources. Um, I, I still need to digest this report, I think, by reading it a couple, three more times, but I have some real concerns about um, where this report was, was headed, and I want to make sure we're not um, moving into some sort of a backdoor uh, process that, um, that uh, maybe some folks outside of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District are trying to encourage. Um, you know, and, and I think Santa Cruz has made it very clear what their intentions are. Um, and we've had that conversation with them at a, at a previous meeting. So, 
Yeah, I, th this needs to be handled very, very carefully. And in fact, we might even want to um, expand on uh, viewpoints on all sorts of recommendations and findings, whether we generally agree with them or not. There may be some shades of meaning that um, that we may want to um, put in there. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, ad hoc committee is absolutely, in my opinion, the right way to go. We've used that in the past for these grand jury reports. It's been an effective tool. I do think that there is support that uh, council and staff would need to provide to that um, a group, whoever that might be, uh, that would be very valuable, particularly when it comes to wordsmithing, some of the items that I think are potentially much more than what they may appear to be on the surface. Um, so uh, that, that would be the way I would want to go with this. Jeff? Okay, so first, yes, on ad hoc committee, we definitely need to do that. Um, top of the head, response to this, in my mind, um, first of all, I was struck by what I considered to be rather unrealistic um, deadlines and time objectives for uh, the various agencies to accomplish some of the things that they're talking about, particularly when you have interagency negotiations that have to take place for some of this stuff. Um, and it, I was also struck that it seems to me if there's one thing that our district can do to improve resilience at this moment against drought, it's to get ourselves in gear and get the, set the CZU fire damage rebuilt because that's the biggest resilience problem we've got by far. And Throughout this report, it talks heavily about collecting more rainwater and being able to, you know, deal with extremely heavy water flows in the San Lorenzo Valley and the and the San Lorenzo River. And it seems to me that the number one thing we can do to improve resilience is to get uh, CZU uh, fire damage uh, repaired and back up and running. Yeah, I, I guess I would uh, add to that that. Um equally important is that we help those uh, small mutuals that uh, were damaged, that that's our first order of business. And then the other is one that's been hanging fire for a while, which is our own conjunctive use uh, change to the water rights, which is essential to the resilience, drought resilience within the district, but also um, in, the, in the levels in which it helps fisheries and makes things more flexible um, in how we use water helps uh, a regional effect too. And so this is why I, I was disappointed in the, in the report because it seemed to uh, not recognize the activities that are already underway, um, certainly by our district and also by uh, the Santa Margarita um, uh, Groundwater Association. And that the fact that, you know, for example, I was not contacted as the president of the board here. Um, there's not a single document from the San Lorenzo Valley uh, Water District that's cited. There's not a, a single reference to the Santa Margarita GSP. Um, so out of those 51 references, uh, 30 some odd are from the city of Santa Cruz. Um, I, I think that that sort of tells us what this document uh, is aimed at, which is that it's aimed at securing a, a secure water drought supply for Santa Cruz. And that's, that's a worthy, noble thing, but we also have our own uh, problems that we have to address and our own ways of contributing to that. And um, so uh, I sort of have two feelings on this. One is that I wanna say all those things, but I also feel that it's not entirely clear to me that, that, that this report deserves a really extensive response. Um, and at least one thing I've learned about uh, being involved in legal processes is the more you say, the more you can get in trouble um, and trigger um, responses back. And so I guess I would argue for, you know, very much a minimalist um, response to this. Um, 
and uh, to not turn it into a, a time consuming thing for either staff or the board, because I just frankly don't think it warrants it. So, um, Rick, go ahead. You're muted, Rick. I'd like a quick question to council. Am I, uh, am I uh, able to, to, to answer any of the board's questions on the grand jury investigation? Um, I will, I will check and get back to you um, within a few minutes. Okay. Okay. And I could answer quite a few of their questions if permissible. Um, in the meantime, let's. Um, if you don't mind, go out. I think that let's go out and get um, any uh, comments by members of the public. I see uh, five folks out there. And Rick, did you want to say something else first? You've got your hand. I'm trying to put my hand down, but it's okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, I see that uh, Jim Mosher has his hand up. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Jim. Well, um, I've been in touch with Brian Larguet, um, who sits on the Water Advisory Commission and who is a hydraulic scientist, a 25 year career in natural resource science. He made a statement to the commission and then wrote a, an email to the head of the, of the um, uh, grand jury. And he says it much better than I can and more authoritatively. And I just would like to read uh, excerpts from what he wrote to the grand jury. I found the document to be superficial, uh, superficial overview of, a co of complex topics. The rigor of planning by both the Santa Margarita Groundwater Management Agency and SLVWD's own work far surpasses this document in useful detail and calls for action. Work by SMIGMA and SLVWD is far more authoritative in its treatment of the highly technical natural resource issues in the governance context. It is regrettable that the grand jury presumes that the water district has nothing better to do over the next 90 days and six months than to respond to their findings and recommendations. One of their chief findings is that there is a lack of resources across the agency. It is ironic that they fail to realize that responding to their report bleeds precious staff time and legal budget that could otherwise solve real problems. Furthermore, while the report cites some 51 documents, none are publications of either SLVWD or SMIGMA, illustrating a lack of effort in understanding the issues of developing recommendations relevant to SLVWD priorities. I encourage SLBWD to give the minimal necessary acknowledgement of this document and then get on with the business of managing the complex problems SLBWD is actively solving. Far more urgent work is fire recovery. Helping adjacent water providers build drought resi resilience is a fine notion, but solving urgent existing supply challenges is a highest priority. I just want to say I completely agree with what Brian said and most of what uh, all of you said on the board. I think you want to give this the absolute minimal attention that you possibly can. I find it offensive that they would write this report uh, and treat Santa Cruz City as if it is North County and ignore the huge problems we're facing uh, and also ignore in their call for collaboration that the city of Santa Cruz filed this protest against our um, our efforts to uh, change our water rights for conjunctive use, and that the County of Santa Cruz sued us uh, 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 over the, the problem with uh, the, the pipe break up in, uh, near Boulder Creek. Um, I, I, I really encourage you to take this uh, as minimal as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Larry Ford. Okay, Larry. Thank you. I, I just got my option to unmute. Uh, Larry Ford Felton, I couldn't say any better than what uh, Jim Mosier and Brian Largay just said. Um, I would uh, 
I'm not quite as disappointed as others are with this report. It sounds like a, a bunch of smart graduate students have gotten together and decided that they need to explain what uh, what drought resilience is and that is more than just groundwater management. And so I appreciate that. And I understand that they're trying to expand people's frame, but clearly uh, this is written, you know, with, uh, you know, with the major involvement of the city of Santa Cruz, we have heard from them before. What, what I suggest instead of, of uh, trying to get all the water agencies to spend a lot of time just responding to this sort of academic request is to uh, get the county to provide the resources to do some region-wide planning that is broader and deeper than just groundwater. Um, certainly, all the other suggestions that they were made that that were made in this report are very reasonable, important, and important, and could be added. Um, you know, um, using wastewater, things like that, um, and so that that's that's where I would go with this. And I and I agree that the deadlines are unrealistic, and that they um, they don't seem to acknowledge that uh, that. SLV Water District has already made a lot of progress on on all the issues that they've raised, you know, with maybe a few exceptions for in, in this sort of broader picture. That's it. Thank you. Over. <laughs> Over and out. Thank you, Larry. And anybody else in the public uh, like to make a comment at this point? Okay, I don't see any more hands up. Uh, so let's go back to uh, the board. And Gina, let, let, it looks like maybe you have an answer to Rick's question. So you want to go ahead? Yeah, thank you. Um, I just checked the penal code again, which has the provisions related to grand jury confidentiality. It contains very strong prohibitions against disclosing uh, the identity of anybody who provided testimony to the grand jury or the content of the testimony or what the grand jury asked the individuals that it interviewed. So we can't discuss any of that here, unfortunately. Okay, uh, Mark. Yes, um, if we don't already have the letter that uh, Jim Moser referred to, um, I'd request that we do get that so that it, at a minimum, the committee that is responding to the um, grand jury report has that in hand. Yeah, I, I'll just clarify that actually uh, Jim shared uh, it with me and it was actually addressed to Rick Rogers, um, okay. the comments. And, and okay, so, so we it, do have it then. So we'll we'll make it part of the record and, okay. um, but you. he did, as Jim said, he did basically make the same comments at the county's uh, water right. advisory council. So Sierra okay. Ryan at the county heard it, um, but what this letter is, is really uh, is telling Rick how he thinks the district should respond. So we'll make it part of the record. Yeah. Thank you. Yesterday afternoon, uh, you know, after agenda was sent out, otherwise we probably would have. Yeah. Yeah, it, it came late. Wednesday evening. Uh, Jamie? So um, I guess, uh, and and I don't know, this might be, um, I would just like to understand uh, when we identify the subcommittee, if there are questions about um, sort of what some of the findings and recommendations are suggesting, um, you know, would we be working or would the committee, whomever it is, be working with Gina on that? Because I have some questions just about some of the recommendations, which seem, um, I, you know, my reaction is a little overly broad in terms of what we as individual water districts would even be able to do in terms of interagency coordination. And so, um, you know, some of that just seems to me like, Okay, nice suggestion, not realistic, um, but I don't know that that's an appropriate response either. And so I would just want to know what the process is to sort of walk through some of those questions. Yeah. I, I think one thing I'd respond 
to on this is I, although I think having a subcommittee would be okay, I think another way to do this would be to have uh, the staff prepare it. And by that, I'm a draft anyway. And by that, I mean, Carly, Rick, and Gina. And Gina could weigh in on these kinds of questions, Jamie, of whether, you know, do we really have jurisdiction and is it realistic to create these overriding bodies um, with the idea that uh, that group of three would, if necessary, you know, for example, if they have a question about ASR, that they would contact me or something, if it was some technical thing, and that they would produce a draft that would come back to the board and everybody, including the public, um, could have something to say about it. Um, that would be my preferred way to do it. Um, but I I, I'm, I'm okay with a, a subcommittee, in which case I think you know, the logical choice would be uh, probably me and you, Jamie, <laughs> because, uh, you know, we're both members of Santa Margarita um, mm -hmm. and our skills and talents um, are complementary. You'd, you'd prevent me from being my usual pedantic professorial self. Uh, and so, uh, you know, that, that would be my suggestion. But my, my preferred one is that we um, have the staff prepare it because we'd have to get their help with certain things like, you know, exactly when we've put in the conjunctive use water rights petitions and other stuff anyway. But, My concern. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, no, did you want to finish up, Jamie? I didn't want to. No, I just was my, I agree with you about staff, but my, uh, you know, leading the sort of writing process, but I, my only concern is that given the 90 day timeline and, and, you know, the fact that it's summer, people are probably going on vacations. I, I, you know, don't, I, I wonder if staff is, has the capacity to meet the deadline, so. Rick, did you yeah. want to respond to that? Staff has the capacity, Jamie, but just to one question, Gina, in the past, you know, staff uh, assisted the, the board ad hoc committee, but I do believe staff wasn't named as part of the ad hoc committee. It was just elected uh, directors that were named to the committee and staff you know, assisted and supported that committee and we would do the same again. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, what I can comment on is how this was done last time. There was an ad hoc committee of two directors and um, I and I don't remember if it was you, Rick. That was me. Okay, provided support and prepared the draft that way. And I think it came back to the board either two or even three times for review mm -hmm. before it was approved. We'll, we'll make we'll make the deadline and and get it done so um, the board has as many times as they want to review uh, as necessary. Um, we'll make that work. Bob. Yeah, uh, and the same process was followed in, in twenty, I think it was twenty fourteen, um, or twenty thirteen. And it, you know, it's a norm that I think is very valuable for uh, the board uh, to be involved in crafting what is a combination of a um, political document as well as a, a document to address real issues. Um, and uh, you know, with respect to the uh, content, um, I, you know, I, I understand, and I had a lot of the same reactions I think that everybody had uh, about this, but. You know, sometimes it's a great opportunity to put out there what the San Lorenzo Valley Water District is actually doing, what its strategy is around uh, water resiliency, and to, you know, basically identify the fact that we could probably have had this done faster had it not been for um, a protest that you know, ultimately is, is not going to really result in any huge changes to, to what, we, what we do. It just drags everything out and costs money. Um, I, I think that has some value in the interest of transparency to the community to make sure that the community understands that uh, we do have a strategy around this and are executing on it. And it's not just sort of blowing off what is, in fact, a very important function inside of the county. This particular report may have perhaps missed the mark, but the previous two reports that grand juries put out were dead on on the mark and really resulted in a lot of really good recommendations and changes. 
And so I, I want to make sure that we're treating this with the respect that it deserves, even if we might have um, disagreements with some of the um, uh, recommendations or findings that they made. Jeff? Um, just a quick question. When does this current grand jury expire? They all have a, a term. Does anybody know? Yeah, they turn over in the summer. So this is essentially the end of their effort and then a new grand jury will be seated. I couldn't tell you exactly when, you know, is their last day and the first day of the new grand jury, but I can tell you that they turn over in the summer after the reports come out. Okay. Mark? Yes. Um, when I, I agree with staff preparing uh, this report. I would encourage as minimal of a response as you feel is appropriate. I don't want to expound on anything in this. Um, I think that uh, us, or the district touting its own uh, horn or merits of what's, is this is not where we need to do that. This isn't a place to do that. And it's not going to have any benefit to the county. I've done work as expert witness in the environmental realm and was um, counseled by my client's counsel, keep my responses as brief as I can. If the answer suffices to say yes or no to the question, simply that and move on. Any other comments? Okay, so I think, uh, well, let me just see if there's any comments from the uh, public attendees about how they would prefer the process, uh, if there's any comments there before I come back to the board and we can make a decision. Okay, I don't see any hands up out there. So um, I guess we're sort of to the stage where it would be good if somebody made, made a motion. Um, is that, I think, about how we do this? Go ahead, Mark. Um, I'd like to make a motion that um, Rick and appropriate staff prepare a draft response to the grand jury recommendations and bring that back to the board by um, is beginning of July appropriate? I want to set some kind of a time frame in this. Yeah, I think that's right. If because if we're going to have you know two shots at it, it's got to be sometime early July. That's that's my thought. Yes. Is is that enough of a motion? Yes, it is. Is there okay. a second? I'll second that. Any discussion of the motion? Jamie. Um, I just wanted to offer a friendly amendment because I, I think it's actually an important part of the process that we do. I agree that staff would take the lead on initiating this process of response, but I think we should identify the ad hoc committee members here um, that will be working with the uh, staff to bring it back to the board. Um, the committee members may not do much initially. We may leave that to staff to make to take the initial cut at it. But I, I, I think that we might want to do that for the sake of efficiency. So um, I would like to suggest a friendly amendment um, because I appreciate Gail's vote of confidence that uh, that we add a subcommittee to Mark's recommendation that include. Uh, myself and Chair Mayhood. Okay, so we, we vote on the amendment first. And so the, the proposed, uh, well, we have to actually have a second for the amendment. Second. Okay, so as I understand it, just let me restate it, Jamie, is that we're, um, we are uh, adding an amendment to that statement that, uh, that the staff would, um, as necessary, um, consult with me as president and Jamie, you as vice president and both of us as members of Santa Margarita. Okay, so the way this goes is you first vote on the amendment. 
Um, so is there any discussion of the amendment? No? Okay, Holly, can we take a vote on the amendment? Public, does the public get to weigh in? Pardon? Does, does the public get to weigh in on the amendment? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, would the public like to make a comment on that? I don't see any. Okay, Holly. Um, I'm sorry, you're saying the um, make a yeah, when uh, amendment, you, you wanted to say the motion? Well, uh, okay, what we can, if, if Mark accepts it as a friendly amendment. Yes, I accept that. Then we're voting on the whole thing. Okay, and as the person who seconded was me, and I agree to the friendly amendment as well. So we now are voting on the full one that the uh, staff, uh, Rick with Gina and Carly primarily will prepare a draft and as necessary, will consult with me and Jamie as president and vice president and as our representatives on Santa Margarita and we'll prepare a draft by sometime early in July so that we have time for at least two shots at this at board meetings before the, what is it, October 22nd, uh, yes. August 22nd uh, deadline. I'll just note that we do have five meetings before that uh, deadline. Okay. So uh, President Mayhood. Aye. Vice President Ackerman? Yes. Director Fulz? Yes. Director Hill? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. yes. Good. The motion passes unanimously. Um, so we go on to our next item, which is unfinished business, new staff position, construction inspector. Rick is trying to ask a question. I'm sorry, Rick? Just a, a quick clarification on the last item. We did not create an ad hoc committee. We just- I, I, don't, think, I don't think we created an ad hoc committee. And is that good enough for council moving ahead? Yes, that will be, that will be fine. Um, there's no reason why we can't share this with two directors um, without formally creating an ad hoc committee. I just wanted to be just sure moving ahead. Thank you. All right, the next item, uh, the uh, request, the staff's request for a construction inspector, the, the district engineer will present uh, that item to the board. Josh. Thank you, Rick. So the district has historically utilized outside resources for construction management. This is a very expensive way to go about it in staff's opinion. As shown in the memo that I that is presented in the board packet, we are spending based on the last several projects, roughly 6.7%, 6.8% right in there of the entire construction budget on construction management. It is staff's opinion that having an internal construction manager or construction inspector in this case, who can perform the majority of the work that is currently being done by consultants would save, uh, I believe on the order of half a million dollars over the next two years. There are a couple of assumptions baked into this. They are laid out in the memo as is the projected uh, or proposed, I suppose I should say, salary schedule. With that, I'm happy to take comments. Okay. Um, are there any, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and start with uh, Jeff this time. If he has any comments, questions? Oh. No, okay. Um, how about uh, Mark? Yes, um, as head of, or as chair of the engineering and environmental committee, the committee reviewed this uh, draft memo, provided comments, uh, to staff, staff revised the memo, brought it back to us. Um, the engineering committee um, recommended by a vote of three in favor and one abstaining uh, to forward this onto the board. So. Thank you. Um, so I will uh, go next to Bob since you're the other member of the engineering committee. Uh, yeah, I wanted to clarify something that didn't come up um, during the engineering committee, but I think is important. Um, are the funds for this position going to be pulled out of 
uh, the capital budget as we would do with a consultant? Um, or is it operating expenses? I understand. So the majority of the funds will come out of capital, come out of FEMA and capital. Um, there'll be some, there is a potential for some that would come out of operating. Yes. Okay, great. And that would be that, what, 15%. 15, 15%. Uh, but well, the majority would, should come out of capital for each each project it would be assigned to and then obviously the fema projects would be reimbursed or it could be grant funding as well uh, sure. such as the uh, the consolidation projects if this person um, uh, or a, a grant project it could come out of that for construction management and, and therefore on the um on the financials that would be prepared um, would that be would that be reflected in um, uh, the financials? That is, this would not be part of the operating expense, but would be coming out of capital. You know, I, I, I will double check that with Kendra because initially it may come out, but then put back in uh, as like true up. But I, I I need to talk with. Uh, I think uh, I can uh, answer yeah. that. Rick. Yeah. Um, I, I remember looking at that as the budget went through before. It gets charged out as part of the department that the person is in, but then there's a line item um, on the operating budget where it's removed from there to the extent, that, you know, it wouldn't, it doesn't have to be just this person, but anybody on the staff that's working on capital projects or FEMA um, and then gets uh, taken out there and then added to the capital expenses. So in that regard, it, it, does lower um, the operating uh, expenses. Yeah, and then the um, uh, and the, and then the because I think the implication that we talked about in the engineering committee is that this person should be, if not one hundred percent consumed, uh, probably oversubscribed given the number of projects going on. We may still need consultants occasionally if the projects were all bunched together is Rick just is that correct there, there may be and there will be some types of work specialized work that we will still use consultants for such things as compaction or uh, structural engineering there are certain things that regardless if we had a construction management contract we would still have those additional costs um, prevailing wage uh, monitoring those types of things will still be a, a sub consultant or another consultant. And, and I think the reason that we're running into this is because when we do a construction manager uh, contract with an outside firm, they're effectively charging us as if we had that person full time, even though, of course, they're not full time or anywhere close to it. Right. So okay. if we if we have to go to the specialized outside firms, will they also be charging us in the same fashion? We will be charging those to the to the to the capital projects. Yes. No, no, but I mean, will they be charging us for a full time person, even if the guy only works there, you know, a day a week or you know, a, a day every other week? Uh, I can address that, Rick, if you'd like. Go ahead. Yeah, they're just, go ahead. Go ahead for, yeah. This, for the specialized testing consultants, structural engineers, that sort of thing they will charge us hourly rather than providing a lump sum or a daily rate often compaction excuse me compaction testing as an example there will be one person on site for one to two hours there will be an additional three to four hours worth of lab work and then an hour to write it all up and that's what they would charge us it would not be one day to come to the field and the second day to work in the lab and write it up and then um, the, the last piece, uh, if there are no constructions underway or for whatever reason we reach a point in the future where there isn't much construction activity underway, which has occurred in the past, um, this person then would be uh, retained and all of their expenses would be under operating expense. Is that, is that the plan? That is. And that is the roughly 15% number that is in the memo. Approximately 15% on an annual basis of this position's expense would end up as operating budget and would be used to assist operations, to assist our GIS tech in our mapping of the district, to assist with locates, a few other 
operational details where an, an extra body would be beneficial. What, what would happen in a situation, for example, where like in the past, we've gotten into a couple, three year period where there was really very little construction going on. What, what would be done then? I would recommend we terminate the position. On a three year stance like that, uh, Director Fultz, uh, I would recommend that we uh, or I would at least bring it to the board for discussion and uh, make a recommendation. You know, I, I, you know, one can never know what could happen in the next sure. three years, but if it was just we ran out of capital projects, uh, no funding, uh, most likely we would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most likely we would run out of funding for whatever reason or not have enough funding to be able to cover that. Um, okay, so I think what I'm hearing is that, you know, if it's a year, we'll probably hold them over. If it goes a long time, three years, probably be looking at it again in between for discretion. Okay, great. Thank you. Jamie? Um, <clears throat> I'm just kind of curious about the, the timing in terms of um, as we, you know, look to bring uh, this position on if it's approved by the board, um, uh, you know, Rick, I, I think I recall you saying at the last meeting that this was not something that you were thinking we were going to urgently fill, that you would then, you know, look to fill it at the appropriate point where you could see that the work was beginning to line up, um, that we would require uh, somebody to be in this position. So um, could you just expand on that a bit? Well, you know, we do have money, you know, in the bank for a lot of these projects. Um, yes, I did make that comment. And what we're finding right now, I mean, the the world changes daily with supply chain issues and materials. Um, we're finding right now that we have a six to eight month delay in pipe for some of our projects. And, and talking with Josh and myself, we may slow walk this until we are sure that we have a continuous supply of materials coming in and that you know we don't have a construction inspector, but no construction. Um, we're day by day, day right now on supply chain issues, and uh, and we're aware of that. And uh, we will slow walk this, but you know, the first step is to get the board to approve a uh, salary schedule, approve the position, and then there is some work to do on procurement, interviewing, and so forth. So um, uh, it's a slow process moving ahead, but we want to continue to move ahead and make sure this person is on board uh, when we start. You know, breaking ground. And keep in mind, the first couple of projects are already contracted out with a construction ins inspector. So there's not an immediate rush to run out, but we want to keep moving in that direction. So we don't have to hire construction and uh, contractors, uh, inspector contractors moving ahead. I hope I answered your question, Jerry. Okay. Any other comments by the or questions by members of the board before I go out to the public? Seeing none, um, I'll go out to the four of you uh, and see if any of you have any questions or comments about the construction inspector position. Okay, um, seeing none, I'll come back to the board. Um, our, I think we're probably to the point where, is, does somebody want to make a motion? Bob has his oh. hand up. Bob, oh, I'm sorry, Bob, I didn't see your hand up. No, no, no worries, Gail. Um, I, I did want to just make one final comment, which is I, I continue to be concerned about the fact that this is an, an, a net add on headcount. Um, and uh, th that, that, is a, that is somewhat reduced in concern based on the fact that most of this will be covered out of uh, the capital expense rather than operating. But um, it, it, is a, um, it is a concern. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. Okay, uh, Jamie. Um, <clears throat> I, I'd like to move the uh, the proposal uh, for the salary schedule, and uh, recommend that we uh, instruct the district manager to develop and fill a new staff position. Theory. Title. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Okay. Uh, well, that was interesting, uh, Larry. <laughs> Uh, I think you're somehow coming through in a peculiar way. Uh, okay, so we have a motion. Do we have a second? I will second that. Okay. 
Um, any discussion of the motion, including Larry in a funny voice? <laughs> did, did you want to comment, Larry? It doesn't look like he does. OK. All right. Something went strange there. Um, so go ahead, Holly. Can you take a roll call vote? President Mayhood? Aye. Vice President Ackman? Yes. Director Fulz? Yes. Director Hill? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. OK. The motion passed unanimously. That brings us to the consent agenda. Um, would anybody like to move any item off of the consent agenda? Okay. Um, then we, that not being the case, uh, how about members of the public? Would they, anybody of the public like to move something off the consent agenda? No? Then we will move on to district uh, reports. And tonight we just have the one, which is the district manager's report. Rick? Thank you, Chair. I'll try to make this uh, very brief. I do have a few things I'd like to, to update the board on. Uh, the first is uh, the uh, three consolidations that we're working on with uh, Brackenbray and Forest Springs. We have moved into the engineering contract uh, with Sandus Engineering. They have been out as we speak doing uh, pipeline surveying and uh, executing their agreement. Uh, the district engineer has also been working with uh, Sandus on a pump station location and um, that project's uh, moving ahead well. Uh, we have received back one of the two uh, consolidation agreements uh, with Forest Springs sign. We're awaiting uh, Brackenbray any day. Um, the third uh, consolidation, uh, Big Basin, uh, we are working, uh, trying to work with uh, the state uh, on um, uh, procuring a, uh, a grant to move ahead on uh, uh, facilitating the engineering work to, uh, to, to tie down exactly what is needed. Uh, upgrades of Big Basin Water for uh, consolidation. We are also uh, in the process of putting together a project list and putting together a, um, a cost analysis of what it would cost of the district to operate uh, Big Basin Water by force account. Um, and there has been a little movement um, talking with the county on possibly even uh, contributing uh, to moving ahead on some of the engineering work, um, more to be uh, determined uh, with that. Uh, we've also made uh, headway on, on uh, re-energizing the temporary inner tie with Big Basin, uh, working with a homeowner that gave permission to set a, uh, a temporary power pole on their property. So we'll be moving ahead uh, with that. Um, we also kicked off our new time card, uh, uh, the district staff's new time card computer uh, program that is allowing us to track very uh, uh, finely the uh, project work that the uh, staff is doing on multiple projects instead of just grouping their time together, which makes it extremely hard for the accounting to, to break out and make sure we charge to the appropriate projects such as FEMA and capital. It is a, um, a cloud-based program um, with considerable drop-down menus that the accounting uh, loads in uh, uh, the software, um, very user-friendly. All 100% of our staff are using that. Um, it is, uh, replaces paper and Excel spreadsheet time cards um, and which is, includes overtime, which is a great uh, attribute to uh, our accounting and our time card. And lastly, um, Carly has been promoted uh, to the project manager position. Uh, we've been looking for approximately six months, uh, as the, the board knows, uh, we created a new position project manager and we just did not get any qualified applicants. Uh, Carly applied for the uh, position and um, we have offered it to her, she's accepted it. Um, we're already off and running on uh, tasking uh, with reviewing uh, complete uh, operational costs for all departments, uh, working on website uh, and scheduling uh, admin projects and the administrative end of the district, which includes trying to post you know, years worth of agendas for committees, 
um, a lot of the different admin that's been needed that we've talked about in the district manager's goals and objectives. Um, and also with last on that, that she will be working on working with the front office staff on going paperless and combining that with our record retention uh, policy uh, that we're moving ahead. So we're excited on that. We will replace Carly um, with a uh, with a staff classified position that will be really looking at uh, environmental CEQA type review, work on uh, outreach and the complete change in staffing will result in a uh, reduction in cost uh, um, from staffing. And that's a, a quick lightning round report to you all. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. Um, are there any quick questions or clarifications? Um, okay, go ahead, Bob. Uh, Rick, on the grants that you're uh, working on getting from the state for Big Basin, um, those those grants wouldn't have any clawback uh, provisions, in them, correct? Any? Well, I'm sorry, Bob. I have a time hearing you. Yeah, uh, the the grants for Big Basin would not have any clawback provisions. I don't understand the term. Is it clawback? Yeah, clawback, meaning if the project doesn't go forward, the state expects you to oh, give the money back. It would not. To my knowledge, no. This is uh, grant funding. What we're looking for is to put out the engineering to, to move ahead uh, for strictly uh, engineering work and, and to evaluate and would not uh, be predicated uh, if the project did not go through. Right. And I did want to say, Rick, as you know, I'm a big believer in cloud and uh, paperless and, you know, making use of the technologies that are available. So congratulations on moving forward on those things. Thank you for doing that. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of that happening. That's really great. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, then we have um, written communications. So would any member of the board like to comment um, on the written communications to the board? Jamie. I I just wanted to ask if um, maybe Gina is appropriate to respond. I know that we have talked about the um, issue relating that, that was raised by a member of the public relating to the terms, the way that the, the, the terms of office are going forward to um, the ballot. There's the one two year term and the several four year terms. And I think a member of the public raised that question again, but I, I it seemed like there might've been a misunderstanding in terms of you know, what we can do as a board versus what we are, um, all the rules that we to follow. Yeah, and I'm happy to answer that. I think Chair Mayhood provided a, a short response to that in the meeting where the you're, resolution- You're right. I forgot, yeah. Yeah, you're right. And she was correct. <laughs> um, and I and also replied to her directly to her, her email. Yeah, the district doesn't have any control over which seats get designated two versus four years. Right. I just forgot that that had already been replied to on the record, and I wanted to make sure that that was also replied to on the record. So thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. Any Anybody else? Okay. Um, then I think we're uh, arrived at that blessed moment of uh, adjournment. So if uh, there's no objection, I will go ahead and... Yes, Rick. Oh, bye. <laughs> oh, okay, that was a bye. I thought you were raising your hand, but that was a this time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. So Good night, everyone. We are adjourned. <laughs>